All right, y'all. This is uh, L. Jermaine Russell. I'm here for another Stocks and Squats. It is uh, Sunday, uh, June 14th, uh, that we're looking at you know, this upcoming week. Uh, but today's Sunday, June 13th. We're looking at the upcoming week of June 14th. And I want to go over some of uh, last week's trades, uh, some that went very well, some that didn't. Um, also, want to talk into some uh, economic news and preview. Yeah. Oh, what up, Andre? So it's just me right now. Um, I was just about to just go over whatever I was going to go over. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> You know, pretty much because I do this every week and I know people like for the first 15 minutes that no one knew uh, mm -hmm. here, just go straight to the trades. Um, but since you're very familiar with at least like how to trade and put, you know, put things together, assemble them and, and kind of know what to look for. Let's uh, dive into some of the things that you would, you know, that you've been looking at. OK, cool. Yeah. Um, but. You know, as normal, like I record these, I put them up on YouTube. As you know, I'm not a financial advisor, right? And all of this is just for entertainment purposes only. So <laughs> I always have to lead with that, even though that the, I know that the system works, right? Um, it's just being patient with it. Um, and once you've found something that's bouncing off of like the 200 uh, simple moving average, then, you know, it's all fair game for a bullish upside, you know? Mm -hmm. um but essentially like what i would typically do is just go over like just a couple of mindset things because stock trading is really mindset really is all mindset all together right and i got this out of uh, napoleon hill uh think and grow rich this is my second time reading it um i read it before i went to med school and now i'm reading it again um because it, it the, the things in there is so poignant and so profound that if you really do put it together, you can really grow rich. Like, and it doesn't even have necessarily have to be monetarily. So this is the thing that he just mentioned about the persistence that the millionaires will, at, during that time, they were really billionaires living off of millionaire money. Um, you know, as billionaires, they were, um, you know, this is this type of mindset that they had. You know, they had their purpose, the desire, the self-reliance, the plans. Like all of this, you can see it for yourself. And I, that's why I put down the page there so you can check it out. Um, yeah, cool. I really do want to get to the trades, but I'm just trying to give you this type of mindset that we have, you know, oftentimes. So like, and I, it's really a good reminder for myself too. So like, you know, I don't know if you've heard of Oda at all. Oda is a, a Oda loop, like where you use uh, observe, orient, decide, and act, kind of use this in management practices. So like if you, when you're a manager in any type of like business situation, these are the things that they do to really like gravitate towards new information and then try to figure out how they can apply uh, the information that they taken in in their own beneficial way. So, you know, you take in information, you process it, and then you give it some type of, if this happens, then that will happen. Or if that doesn't happen, then this will happen. You know, so you, you get, Okay, so you get that type of understanding of what will happen, you know, or what could happen, what might not happen, but you have to have a thesis once you get that information. If you don't have a thesis, if you don't, if you don't have uh, some, something to work with, then it's going to be hard to kind of maneuver or act the way that you want to in a beneficial way. Um, And so this is like the order of operations that I typically go through, <laughs> like just to, you know, see if a stock is going to go in the, in the right direction. And oftentimes, and this is why I have it not on display mode, but I, I thought I typed in four hour, but apparently I have not. And I did something else too. Oh, there you go. <laughs> no problem. So the I'm four to hour time. With my laptop. So the four hour time frame is like really, really important too. Like, you know, sometimes we just look at the if we're if we're looking to enter in a position 
only when we're looking to enter in a position. Because once you get in a good position on the downside, using that smaller time frame, you still use the daily to give you that general direction of where the stock is going to go. Because the daily is really what's going to tell you if a stock continues to go up or it's going to go down. And we're going to see quite a couple of examples of that, um, especially with CAR. Car. I had. I wish I didn't sell that. I had it last year in May at 24 23 or 24 dollars a share whatever it's at 94 dollars a share today so just one mm -hmm. year time gave it and that tends to happen to me because i don't i like patience you know, like i will find the stock that will move higher always i did that with wwe was another one that did that this past week um and they all follow this this method this wyckoff method like Every last, every time, all of these breakouts, anytime they ever happen, they follow the same pattern over and over again. And getting people familiar with seeing this pattern will help you, you will stress less. I guarantee you this. Because this pattern, you know, in combined with like these order of operations, like will help you really start to see what, well, it's at the bottom now. And I should ride the wave. So what happens in the Y call is when a stock is about to increase, right? Have this exponential increase, it, it hits to a certain point and then consolidates at that certain point, right? If it can't break that point anymore, it comes down, right? It it will hold, it will, it will try to hold this support, but it will always fail and come back down. Right. But once it comes back down, it has a way of balancing itself out. And what happens is that once it comes down and balances itself out, this is where it's entering phase one, right? So phase one is where the, you have this whole accumulation at the bottom that happens. And then once that accumulation happens, it enters to phase two, right? So we saw what phase two looks like. This is phase two, right? Here. This uh, exponential incline. And then it consolidates phase three. And then it goes through phase four where it breaks down. And we see where this phase four leads to. It leads back to phase one, consolidates, breaks up, phase two. So you see this all the time. Uh, it gets really redundant. The thing is, it's trying to find it when it actually does happen. Um, because not all stocks, you know, look the same. They're not going to always look that clean. But you will see it, you know, but you just, it's not going to always look that clean. Um, earnings this upcoming week is uh, a little different because there's not a lot happening <laughs> as you can see um not much going on it's not like how it was the previous week uh but knowing what the economic news is going into this week there's nothing really re being reported on on um monday but their retail uh economic news will be reported on tuesday morning at 8 30. so uh, it'll be Retail, including like you know cars and everything like that, and then it'll and then later on in the day they will do one that's not including cars. I don't know what the real difference is between reporting car earnings and not car earnings in the totality of retail, but they do that, so I'll be watching. And one of those um, retailers is Lazy Boy. Lazy Boy, you know, um, who knows? It, it, Probably one that like really surprised us uh, as well. Like, like I, I don't know. There's been a couple of surprises in the retail um, the recently. And then there's Clear Sign. Clear Sign. They're a communications company, a oh, communication services company. So um, I know they do. You know, I, I think it was just like parts and some type of labor that comes with with it. But they have a kind of a breakout chart that's happening leading into Tuesday. So. You know, this is usually what I would consider like the, the, the run up before earnings where a stock will start to run up before the earnings release and then it tanks um, so that insiders can buy shares. So let's start looking at the actual like charts of um, stocks that, you know, upcoming week. Um, so Andre, I know that uh, we mentioned that we'll go over some of the, uh, some of the stocks that you that you traded and stuff like that. I was watching EAT like all week. Yeah. <laughs> like, what was your thoughts on like, getting into that one? 
Um, well, I mean, I saw I saw the the big jump. That was really what got me looking at it. And then after watching, um, I was watching someone's a uh, YouTube video, and they had also mentioned it. I started watching the option prices just starting to rise, but I'm still trying to figure out exactly when to enter into a contract and when, um, you know, there, there's a potential for like uh, maybe a reversal. So maybe it's jumping up, but then all of a sudden it'll, you know, cut back and, you know, I'm, I'm stuck holding the contract that's not going to sell at what I thought it was going to sell at. So for me, I guess it was just uh, hearing information from other places. So that yeah, uh, do that's you what really got one contract. Do you remember? Well, this is a breakout Let's chart, see. like it's waiting to happen, mainly in the fact that it's in the food service industry. That's why mm -hmm. that's why I was watching even more because you know I I inspect uh, I inspect restaurants and hotels. Right. So like, when it comes to these things, it gives me a chance to like actually look at what they're like Wendy's. Like Wendy's last week, they did very well. So I thought East was going to be able to run on that bandwagon too, as far as the breakout chart is concerned. Now, I think that you're in the right direction, but when it comes to the options, usually it's a little bit difficult as you can tell, right? Um, if you have the shares in this, I could see this being very, very uh, profitable for you. Um, the options, I, I'm not sure which one, did you do the June expiration or did you go farther out? You know, I actually don't remember. I think it was, it, yeah, it had to be a June expiration. And I think it was a, um, it was probably a week, a weekly. So whatever week that was, it was ending on that Friday, I think. I don't even think they do weeklies. Well, so, at least so no, it must have been. No. So maybe it was the 18th. Maybe it was the 18th. So I can even see why someone would want to even buy options in this when it was, uh, you know, since they're thinking about the $65 um, mm -hmm. strike, right? That it might expire there. Um, usually when I look at options, I try to look at what the Delta is gonna be and how high it is. Like let's say I prefer Deltas in the 40s and 50s, but recently I've been, you know, listening to uh, some advice from other, from another trader, actually, you. He'll probably join us later on if he's not in right now. Fitz, um, he, you know, he usually has a lot more detail on the options contract. So usually I'll be able to pick the chart and then he will be like, all right, the options actually look good on that one. Um, that's what happened with ATOM um, this past week with me. I ended up buying ATOM options contract um, before the actual run-up. Um, I was buying it when it was in the $20 range. And I was actually kind of mad because the options don't work like the shares. So when I was buying, I, what price did I buy that? I bought it like $20 and like, where's my notes? Uh, I bought it like $20. And then it ran up to uh, 20, I think it hit 30. Uh, yeah, it actually hit 30 on the day. Um, mm -hmm. But the first day that I bought it going into the second day, I was actually losing money as the share price was going up. <laughs> Right. That's, so that's why I mentioned like the options is kind of difficult. I was like, hey, he's <laughs> <laughs> like, it should be going up, right? It should be going up. What's going on? <laughs> and that's what I, 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 that's what I noticed too. <laughs> right. So, so yeah, so you noticed that too with E. Mm -hmm. Could hey, could you um actually add me on my um laptop? I think I have another meeting invite waiting. Or have a meeting request. Or you see me trying to join. Oh shit! Be <laughs> easy to see the chart. Yeah. <laughs> the facts. Okay. Yes. I didn't even you. know people were trying to join in. Oh, I am so sorry. Ooh. No, it's fine. Uh, I apologize uh, for anyone that I had waiting. <laughs> so sorry for having you waiting, uh, Donna. Donna, Grace, um, and Praza. Uh, nice, nice to have, nice to be visited by you as well. Um, ooh, chaos. Hello? Everybody good? All right. 
So I think um, I was we were talking about uh, E, and I was showing you Adam. There was another reason why we're here. <laughs> Either way, um, let's go back to E. Maybe maybe I conjure my thoughts back from there. So Andre, just to go over the chart, like typically. What I would normally do is uh, I would go to the, this is why I said the four hour time frame is so important. Um, when we're looking to, you know, look at a chart to see where that stock can actually go. Because uh, when we use the four hour time frame and then the moving averages to go with it, this red line is the 200 SMA price. Right, so this this the colors don't change on any time frame. So now that I'm on the four hour time frame, when we go to you know the one hour and the two hour, even the daily time frame, the colors are still the same. The the moving averages still represent the same thing, even the technicals below it. So uh, the green is the five EMA. The five anytime a stock is trading above the five EMA, uh, the price goes higher. Anytime the stock is trading below the five EMA. The price goes lower. If it goes lower, it will go to the 20 SMA price, which is this teal line. I know I should zoom in. I'm sorry. This teal line. This teal line is the 20 SMA price. So anytime a stock goes there, um, it can either bounce off the 20 SMA price and then re try to retest where the five EMA price is. If it cannot sufficiently close over that five EMA price, and it starts closing below the 20 SMA price, it's gonna go lower and retest its previous support price. Uh, support price would be about $55. Uh, maybe if we're, if we're really, really considerate, we can consider 59, this 59.66 area uh, would be a good support price too. Um, but why I mentioned the four hour time frame being important is that when the stock is trading below it, that 200 SMA price becomes pretty much the most it can go to, the highest it can go to, and before it gets rejected, right? So that's what happened here. It got rejected, came back down, and now what we wait for is a coalescing of these three moving averages to happen. So there might be a time and day where this stock will continue to trade sideways um, consolidating for maybe two or three days, um, maybe four days. But if we're looking for that contract to, ex uh, to end in the money, the $65 call, there has to be some good retail news. This is why knowing when the economic news will come out, we'll have to have some good retail news to give this a catalyst so that it can get a bump over that 200 SMA price and then trying to go higher to that $65 um, price target. But like, I can't see that happening. That's probably why the, um, the, the $16 calls are at 17, a delta of 17, because, uh, because they're saying that there's a 17% chance that this stock will actually end in the money. Um, so that, that, could be, that could be it. You know, I'm not saying that I would be a buyer of puts here because I don't know the volume, but what we wanted, what we also, and this is what Fitz mentioned too, um, is that we want a volume that's much more than the open interest, right? Whether you're doing it on puts, I mean, on calls or puts, uh, that's what we always want, right? If we started to see a whole big volume of puts over here, now we know that something is up and someone's trying to push the price down further, but we don't really see more puts than calls that happen on Friday, because this is all volume that happened on Friday. Um, so, you know, so if you did buy the, uh, the June contract, um, maybe you're in the money, maybe you're, you know, you're $6 on in the money, but sometimes with these stocks that I don't believe this has a lot of volume daily trading. Um, I mean, on each day, it trades about a million, 1.1.3, 1.2, 2.2. Okay, so it has some decent volume, especially on days that it's green. But I say that um, 
daily wise, this has upside. This has the upside. It's going to hold this sixty dollar area. Maybe might come down to like you know, like I said before, in the smaller time frame, fifty five, right? Maybe. Um, but if it doesn't, if it doesn't come down to here, um, best believe it's going to continue to go up higher, and the price is just going to trade between whatever this two hundred price becomes. Right now, the two hundred SMA price from the four hour time frame is sixty six dollars and seventy one cents. So if it's, if it's, you know, continues to coalesce and then we see that the five EMA trades above the 200 SMA, then we officially have entered golden cross territory, which is a bullish indication, meaning that the stock is going to go higher. But this, you know, this was a stock that I'm glad that you brought it up, Andre. I'm glad that you, you know, that you were, you know, this is something that does have upside uh, uh, potentially, especially, you know, Things are opening up and food is going to be delivered to different places. So any other thoughts on eat? Not for me Again, feedback from you, Andre, probably because you have uh, both microphones on. So mute the microphone that you're um, not talking into and talk into the other microphone. That, that tends to help because I use, you know, my laptop and my phone. So had the same issue. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll go on to the next one. <laughs> and so when we'll see what um, Andre can get his audio um, fixed, because you know, I would like to hear if you had any other questions about that. UAVS is one that I've been adding on to slowly. Um, I've been just adding shares, adding shares. And why I say UAVS is mainly because it's one of those stocks that is, um, is one of those stocks that needs, that's a part of the aerospace system. So it's part of the aerospace system where it gives it, it's, you know, there's a lot of blue origin. There's a lot of uh, going into space, you know, with Amazon, uh, there's Microsoft that also did a deal to like just released today on, um, you know, having taxi cabs as part of like, you know, space innovation. So why not? Uh, that space delivery of, of you know medical supplies or whatever that they might be be part of the conversation. Medical supplies, healthcare supplies, um, you know, you know, it could be even your documents from a lawyer, whatever it is. Like you can have you know this drone to come to your home and and drop this off. So I believe that there's some talks. I was looking through some SEC problems that wasn't seeing any updated talks between um, uh, AG Eagle and Amazon, but I can see this happening, especially with uh, FAA regulation needing to, um, we talked about a little bit more just because, you know, we have companies like Space um, with Virgin Galactica, um, we are having Blue Origin, SpaceX, every, I was looking for commercial aerial flight. So, um, you know, this is the next stop is just being able to deliver stuff to people's homes. I think we are entering the phase of the Jetsons. So, you know, we're just doing it right now. So uh, maybe you might see these flying cars. You might be rolling in and flying. Rolls Royce is actually a part of that uh, investment group that is looking for, um, you know, 
air, car, air delivery of passengers on Earth. So, you know, Rolls Royce, you might pull up on a Rolls Royce Uber um, that is flying in the air. <laughs> you might never know. So, uh, Rolls Royce would be a, a nice addition to it all. Um, Keisha, thank you for coming through. Greatly appreciate you as well. Um, yeah, so this this guy's speaking on AG um, Eagle. This is one of those drone deliveries that um, I feel like has a lot of upside. And I remember I was we were mentioning um, the Wyckoff method at the very beginning. And I'll, I just want you to just take take an idea. Now back here when I was buying, I you know I was certain, but I wasn't certain. I wasn't really kind of understanding of my of how to really apply the moving average. So I was trying as hard as I could, especially on a stock like this, <laughs> that it moves um, as much as it does. But once I started to understand that there is a phase one, all of this is phase one, right? Even if we go back, when we, once we go back further, it was all phase one, right? Regardless of how many times I tried to buy, it was still phase one. It gave us a little phase two, consolidated, consolidated, that's phase three. And then it kind of dipped down phase one, I mean, phase four, right? And then continue to consolidate, but this is still like a continuation of phase four, right? It's still like a real consolidation. And then it starts to get this little peak here. Those are the days that you want to look for. Like, all right, what's your peaking? All right, what's your peaking about? And then you find out what the information is. As you can tell, each day it traded above the five EMA until it was overbought. Came back down, you know, because it needed to stop being overbought. Came back down. As it comes down, it tries to test the 20 SMA price. And what does it do? It holds the price right here, right? So we can say that this was all phase two. Then we came, it came down. Maybe this was phase four, the four, three and four. I'm not sure, but this was all four. And then it came across right here, phase one. Right, so it's just holding this support area because it, it had red days, it had a solid green day. The solid green day kind of just went to the next day, which was the solid red day. Who knows what we would have done if we would just mess with the price in between, but uh, meaning on the smaller time frames. But it did try to test the 20 SMA price and it did trade at the five EMA price. So that becomes important. That trades at the five EMA price, not just above it, but at least at it. Then it gave us a strong green day the next day, right? So uh, during this whole time, it's trading above the five EMA, right? Until it couldn't hold anymore. And, and then eventually started to collapse. And then how we know it really collapses, we use some of these confirmations of the, pro, of the moving averages. Once the five EMA crosses below the 20 SMA, the price now wants to test the, tw the 200 SMA price, this red line. We use the confirmation of the, MACD, where it confirms to come down. And then we also use the confirmation of the TTM squeeze. Like everything confirms that it's coming down, right? So that gives us that, that whole confirmation. Like, okay, so we, we went from phase one to phase two, right? Because now this is all like phase two. And then it couldn't go anymore. This was almost consolidation right here. And we could say it was consolidation because it gave us this kind of an indecision green candlestick but it gave us this hard stop on this day. And it came down and even though it's still trading above the five, it gave us another, or the, even though it's still trading above the five EMA price, it still gave us another hard stop here, right? So we can say that, okay, previous resistance was right here. All right, it's gonna collapse or it might pull back. So I'm not getting it. You might have to go to the news that, to figure out if there is anything that would give it more of a catalyst to see if it would break this price, but it didn't, it collapsed and it continued to go sideways. So, you know, I know that is not as clear as seeing, you know, the, the Wyckoff method, but that was happening, you know, as the stock was trading above the five EMA price. Once it collapsed, now it's just trading at one again because the stock is traded above the 200 SMA price, which is this red line. The 200 SMA price is $5.53. Mm -hmm. 
any trend, anytime it starts trading above the 200 SMA price and the MACD on the daily, the MACD starts trading above the zero line on the MACD, which is the, the, the moving average, you know, momentum, it's the momentum indicator. And it's not overbought, which is the RSI, which tells us its relative strength. It's above, you know, the 50 line. So the 50 is that middle ground where if it was below 50, that's bearish, meaning that it's going to 49. You know, you look at the numbers on the side, you, it'll tell you on your platform, you know, what the, what the relative strength is. Then you, we have these, you know, these dots right here. Now for me, it's still red. I don't like this. I want it to change to, to green, right? Or at least give me a teal histogram, right? If you can give me a teal histogram, then I'm a little bit better. But I still know that it's going to be consolidating for some time. So this one would be a stock that you can just buy and hold and wait for them to either come out with FAA news or some type of deal that them and Amazon have created to say, you know, we're going to do drone delivery expanding urban cities, you know, so that's, you know, and that's why the FAA are in talks about it right now about long range drones and, you know, whatever ruling that they might have with that would be beneficial. So the news does help. This is a good catalyst for, for the stock and hopefully it can go over $6. I bought the contracts um, to go into what Andre was talking about before with contracts. I bought the um, seven, five calls and mainly because there's been a lot of volume more than the open interest. So uh, on Friday was the first time that it really had um, lower volume than the open interest. Um, we really went higher, uh, or, uh, higher volume. So I'm not sure if, um, if there's a true belief that this can reach um, $7.50 before the end of the end of the, uh, the contract expires. That contract expenses expires Friday. So it's not a, it's not a weekly contract. It's a, it's a you know, regular contract. 22% um, chance that it would end in the money. So I'm not the, you know, I don't have my hopes up right now. Uh, if it gets to like somewhere in the $6, like it's trading in the $6 range, then whatever the contract might be, I might just want to get out of it because I, you know, I can only trust them so much. So if it only can go so high, then it will only go so high. And then, you know, sometimes we don't really get a chance to look at the options contract um, chart itself. So when you look at the chart, you'll see that the, um, the chart moves, uh, not all the way different, but it, it's still the same. Um, we still get in this whole consolidation here where it's coming above the zero line. So it might try to find some upside, but you know, the theoretical price, you know, when you're looking at options and you want to know if a contract is actually worth its price, you want to buy, you know, you want to buy a real, relatively below the theoretical price. Um, I bought close to um, where I was buying at 30 cents and I bought a little bit more at 20 cents. Um, right now it's at 10 cents. Um, I believe that people will push the stock price maybe up to 35 cents again, you know, based on, you know, this is just based on this contract, right? So this contract might find some type of room, but I'm definitely selling it before Friday. There's no way uh, I am holding it all the way through the end of the expiration of the contract because I don't really see it without the necessary volume, like Monday will open up and tell me something different, but without the necessary volume, I don't really see this going, this contract going higher. And in, and I say that because of the volume. Um, without the necessary volume, it's not gonna do it. The technicals are behind it. Maybe if I go to the smaller time frame, I might sound less pessimistic, but um, yeah, it's, it's kind of holding, not quite, you know, this, on the four hour time frame, it's given us a week 
green, weak buying, uh, really weak selling. Uh, there was weak buying that happened there. So, you know, the, the momentum is dying um, on the contract and it's still kind of dying after having that explosive hit right up here at the 65 cent range. This is why I wait <laughs> on certain things on when stocks give me that strong move, I have to wait for it to pull back. And I miss a lot of plays like that, but it's because let's say I bought it up here and was buying it all the way down. I waited until the end of the day and I said, oh, okay, you should be able to hold maybe. And it didn't, and it came down to um, 15 cents. And it tried to, it tried to do something. I forget, I think I was traveling at this time. So maybe I could have got rid of it here, um, but it's still trading below the 200, this red line, the 200 SMA price, which is at 26 cents. And it has been trading around 26 cents for quite some time, right? So um, right now on the hour chart, 24 cents is the theoretical price that people believe this options contract is worth. So if I can get rid of it off my hands and just keep the shares, I still have shares in the company, um, but I'll more than likely get rid of the contract. Um, I think I'm down like $15 on it. So, um, but that's UAVS. Uh, See if there's another. Does anyone have any uh, stocks that they are looking at that they're thinking about getting into? Not quite sure. Hello. Someone said. Uh, Keisha said Chegs. 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 Nice. Thank you. What is it, C H G G? Yeah, you're right. Or no, without the E, I'm bugging. All right. So, yes. Um, so we're gonna go with the white coffee, right? Um, but right now it's trading below the 200 SMA price. So to give you a fast answer, anything that I can do. Uh, it's going to test this 200 SMA price. So you have a good $7, maybe $8 range to play with, depending on what price you get in at. Um, right now, it's about $74. It's, yeah, $74. Uh, let's say 72. Let's say 72 is probably more of support. And let's let's try to verify that. So as we're breaking down, and this is just a simple way of me trying to get a line so I can show where support and resistance are. Oops. So I just, I'm gonna move this value point so it doesn't really matter anyway. <laughs> but the end point that matters because I went a long time, right? I'm gonna cover a long distance. So, I'm gonna zoom in from when it did the break, right? It did this break, right around earnings here. They beat earnings by two cents back in May of last year. So I think I remember seeing that. Yeah, I remember this one because it, it does with uh, education and learning like online too, right? So that, um, that definitely has some positivity behind it. Um, during that time. Right now, I'm not 100% sure as schools are starting to reopen and how that's gonna be treated. But either way, looking for support and resistance. <laughs> so support right here around $72 or so. Um, I said 72.30, maybe. And I said that because of the break that happened right here. All right, that was, that was what is now support was previous resistance. So that's why I say that um, it broke right here, it broke down right here, right? So the support became now overhead resistance. Um, did that a couple of times. Um, I don't want to get too narrow on it. And $66 might be the 
ultimate downside if nothing were to happen, right? But I, not nothing, if there were negative news reported on this side. Um, but essentially, when we're looking at it at present time, we're seeing that there's overhead resistance for well, this support here, but there's overhead resistance up here at 95. Uh, say 95 because of that hard stop right there, probably could even go lower. Um, there was a hard stop right here hard stop right here. So let's zoom in a bit. Let's really see it. So when we zoom in, when I was saying these hard stops, you see, see how the stock kind of goes up and then it stops, it kind of give you this fake, like, oh, I'm gonna go higher, but it really came back down. Um, so that was a hard stop. Um, and then tried again and they failed for coming around here. So I say about right around here, one hundred and two dollars and fifty cents. We'll say that that's the next resistance up. Right around there. Okay. So why do I have these wide ranges? Um, especially if I say that the stock is going to get rejected by the two hundred SMA. That's not always the case. There are some times where the stock, based on whatever news that it might have, that it will get to the 200 SMA price and then break through that and then test the next resistance up. So sometimes I like to identify where the next resistance up price is. Um, so going into the four hour time frame, uh, we also still see that it's trading below the uh, 200 SMA price. I gotta figure out how to get rid of the gray lines. Oh no, that's actually important. Sorry, that's <laughs> the gray. The gray area is the uh, pre-market and after hours, so that's actually important. Sorry. Um, so it's still trading below the, the 200 SMA price, which is about 44, 84 dollars on the four-hour time frame. Can it get there? That's a six dollar upside, possibly. It's not overbought. Um, you're getting a green signal on your TTM squeeze on the four-hour time frame. And the moving average or the MACD, the momentum is crossing above the zero line. So that's also a good, good indication. If we go to the hour time frame, um, on the hour, we see that uh, it's, it's crossed, the moving average crossed over the 200 SMA price, which is good. Um, it is overbought, which is not the best thing that we want if we're trying to enter in on a price. Um, but when we see, when we start applying the, the Wyckoff method, you see that it had, it made its all time high on this time frame. Came down, came down, came down, traded below the 200 SMA price. This is all phase four, right? And even though it tried to go back up, it's kind of, that's more like phase one than two. No, can't even apply that. Phase four, I'll say one, or no. Four, then this is one. This is two, three, four, one. Whoops, sorry. One, two, then three. Continuation of three, then on the four. Now four is below the 200 SMA price. Continues to go a little bit lower, a little bit lower. So this is all one right now. One, 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 one. Entering into phase two but it's overbought. So anticipate the price retesting the 200 SMA price, which is 75.78 on the hour time frame. Right? Um, so we're going to stick with that number, 75.78, even though, even though after hours, it went up to $78, right? Went up to $78, can still pull back by the time the market opens. Um, so that you can get a better price. Um, if I were like if me looking in right now, if I was to try to get in on it, this is what I this is my mentality thing, because it's still trading below the 200 SMA price. So we do know that it can make a rush. You know, in the next, you know, even though it's overbought on the hour, you know, you still have four hours. Each candlestick will represent four hours for it to to retest this 200 SMA price. Can it get to 
84, 37 in two days. This day, this day by this day, very possibly. I can see, I can see it because it's not overbought. The momentum is still green. Um, let's go to the two minute time frame. Let's see what it did. Made it, made a new high um, on that time frame. So, so when I when I say it made a new high and I say it with emphasis, it's because I, at that point, I do want it to trade below the two hundred SMA price. Um, it's overbought, so I want it. I when it when it makes that new high, it always comes back to the two hundred SMA price on the two minute five day chart. And I feel like it does that for every time frame, but depending on if you're trying to buy in on a position, knowing that on intraday trading, where it makes a new high, if it makes a new high on intraday trading, but this is five days, that is going to come back to the 200 SMA price at some point or another. So at that point, you have to assess whether or not you want to a buy where it's at or b wait for it to come back to the 200 sma price then buy or even c wait for it to come to the 200 sma price and see how long it will trade below the 200 sma price before it comes back up to the 200 sma price on the intraday time frame that requires patience but that type of patience I had to apply on ATOM. Um, I knew it had technically it was going to have some upside. Technically, I knew it was going to have some upside. As you could tell right around here, what price did I buy you at? <laughs> I said that at the beginning. What price did I buy you at? I bought you. Uh, and yes, if you don't write notes on your positions, you're doing yourself a disservice. You need to understand why you, you're buying at the price that you're buying at. Um, Cause that, that's very, very helpful. So I bought the contract, I bought 55 cent contracts. Um, and at that time they were at $20, the, the, the stock was at, Twenty dollars and eighty cents when I bought it, so that was good. Um, that was Monday. Monday was the seventh, so that was right around here. So I was able to get in on this day. Um, where's my contract? I can show you the contract. Do sorry. I, I'll show you the contract in the, the contract uh, chart. So at least you'll get a, a chance to see what that that's about. But when I when I bought it on that Monday, you see it was a red candlestick on this day on the option contract. I of course sold too soon. Yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> that's what I do. Um, but the you know you had to wait. Essentially, you know, because you 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 know that it made a strong move one day. Um, so because it made a strong move that day, you want to see what the next day is going to do. So I had to wait. Um, and um, it was, I was fortunate enough to be patient and understanding that I was going to have to wait. But when when I end up buying in, you see it was below the two hundred SMA price, and this is what I presume that. Keisha is is waiting for it. You're waiting for the moving averages to cross over the 200 SMA price so that it has a chance to be overbought. So that when it's overbought, now you can decide if you want to buy or if you want to sell or you know whatever you want to do, right? Because um, if you want to buy more, you can always increase. Okay, so let me go back. Where are you? Nope, that's not it. Volume. Can you see? Yes. Okay, that's ATOM. So going back to Ched. 
now that we see that, we see how trading below the 200 SMA price can give us exponential upside once it goes over the, the 200 SMA. You know, just be mindful of when you you plan on getting in. You know, that supportive price around 70, you know, $72 is really good. The breakout price at $76 looks very, very amazing if it can hold above it. Um, everything is lined up. Everything is lined up. I just want this to turn teal for you. The histogram to be teal and on the opposite side of the zero line to give you um, more upside or at least a chance. But like like what we said, it's overbought on the intraday time frame, so it's going to come back to the 200 SMA price. Probably trades wide too, um, like a spread of 50 cents or a spread of 75 cents, maybe 30 cents in the spread between the bid and the ask, but um, at least it has price action. So maybe it goes a little higher, but it's gonna pull back. If it does that for Tuesday, um, you have that retracement, then you know that you can at least buy some shares or buy an option, let me see, $84. $84. Can you get that? Where can you get to? If we were to buy an option, what option would we buy? I was I was looking at November because they have um, their earnings in August. And when I looked at the history, um, they passed all of their earnings in the, the last three, I believe. So I was trying to get it um, after their earnings. So one of, do you know when their earnings will be reported? I thought I thought I saw August 3rd or something like that. It was early part of August. And in the main, oops, not that one. You're saying the early part of August. I'm looking at the October, maybe July. It will have to be July. Because I don't see any options available for anything in August. I'm just looking at their volume, seeing what that looks like right now. Um, go to check. G. So let's see, education and training services. They have a share float of 139, a sh short float of 7%. That's not bad. Relatively low comparison to what's being shorted today. Uh, are there insider buying going on? What y'all doing? Y'all been selling in April at what price? 95 cents or $95? Options in there. Yeah, April 16th. All right, Chad, what'd you do? So this was at eighty nine dollars, eighty nine and ninety one dollars when they had some of the common stock before they sold it. Amount of shares, it was 19,000 shares. So, so obviously they were trying to get some money for something. They're doing, they're, they sold some stock, um, either their options or their shares itself for a purpose. Um, I can't think of what that purpose might be. The only thing I could think of is that, hey, um, there is some upside. If we can get to how they responded in earnings in the previous earnings, there's no reason why they should respond differently, especially you know, that education is still gonna be needed regardless. And if 
the economic budget the economic budget has increased educational services um which they have um biden's plan was to do that so maybe some of that money might go to check i don't know what they're selling inside for so the think of it on the long term channel i'm not 100 percent sure of what could happen other than it needs to trade above the 200 sma price to go higher <laughs> but right now it but it does look like there's some upside there it does look like there's a whole bunch of upside oh you're breaking up Oh. Well, I know Keisha was trying to ask another question. Um, can I give her a second? Does anyone else have any questions? Um, any stocks that they're looking at? Um, ones that they're thinking of? Oh, absolutely. Thank You're very you welcome. So much. Even though I could still hear you and it came out very broken out, I felt the heart, heartfelt passion behind that. Thank you. I'm, you know, hopefully it helps. I think um I forgot what's you know, there's a couple of stocks that we, you know, that we've gone over uh these past couple of weeks um in the chat. Um, and one of them was WWE. Uh, as you know, I watch wrestling. I still do. I am a believer in that company because they tell stories and they also give people chances, which is, you know, to really develop their character and put it out onto the main, on the main stage. Um, and I like that. I, li I like that. You know, you really start to see some things that how independent contractors are, are truly treated and, you know, how, you know, an owner really uh, starts to think about their employees at times. So um, it did finally break, right? And once again, Wyckoff method, phase one or phase two, I should say, all phase two, they traded above the 200 SMA price. This is, this is all we want. We want to see this. And when it did that, it finally uh, ended phase three. Phase three at $58, right? Collapse, collapse on earnings. And that was phase four, phase one, consolidated, go back to phase two, kind of test this 58 once again. You can do it. I remember I was in it at this time when it spiked and did this. I got rid of my contracts. It came back down, did the same bullshit, then it went sideways. All phase four, then one. One down some more with some bullshit. I'm glad I was out back here. And then it, it finally like spiked back up. I didn't get back in. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if it was going to come all the way down to the 200 SMA price, right? Um, so when it finally went up and then pulled back, Stephanie McMahon went on to CNBC this past week. And as I was trying to shift money around, <laughs> I was like, hold on. I could really gain on this one because I... I had a feeling that uh, her presence alone on uh, on the financial network was going to give a boost um, to the stock, and it did. It definitely did. It went up to seventy something dollars. I don't know. I was mad, and then it came back down. Um, so now it's still trading above the five EMA. I want to see if it can hold uh, another day, even though it's over. Um, even though it's not overbought and it has the momentum behind it. Uh, this stock that has dividends, um, our friend Angie loves dividends. Um, this stock does have some um, excuse me, does have some trouble times, right? It has some volatility. So if it can just stay above this price, there's been a lot of layoffs or you know, you know, 
workers that are that have been laid off by the company. Uh, the last time they did this, this is when uh, WWE and WCW, well, then WWF and WCW were having their little fight, uh, Monday Night Wars. So when they did, when when they were laying off people back then, it gave them a chance to bring in a whole bunch of new talent. So the price did fall back, uh, and and when it did fall back, it it, it I think it was like trading at eighteen dollars a share at the time. Um, and this was like back in 2002. So now that we're in current day 2021, uh, it's coming back uh, over the 200 SMA. Its previous high was above $100. Um, it was, yeah, well, slightly above $100. Um, and as you can see, it was trading above the 200 SMA price. Once it does that, we're good. Once it gets to a certain point, like this was the previous high, right? Pulls back exponentially. Um, and then this traded along the 200 SMA price until it tried it again. So we know when it makes a high, it wants to come back to the 200 SMA price um, on that time frame, right? Once it does that, once it finds support and it starts trading above that, especially on the daily, it will go by higher. Um, so now that it's trading below the 200 SMA price, well, it was trading below the 200 SMA price, started trading above it. Um, I knew this was phase one. I, I knew it was coming, um, but like I said, you know, I was trying to wait. Stephanie McMahon came in. It was like one of these days right here this past week, and she said something. Stock goes up. Um, that was, and they're going on, and then they're traveling too. So that that also helps with their funding. So let's see what they can do with holding on to their talent and holding on to their share price. Um, RVP is a stock that I'm looking at for this upcoming week. Um, retractable needles, still need them. Your crackhead's favorite friend. Well, I shouldn't say that, but either way, you know, there's, there's a need for retractable needles. Um, there's a lot of vaccines still going out. There's going to be a lot of mandates that people get their vaccine. So after it already went and made its all time high at $21, this was pretty much around when Joe Biden was like, hey, you know, everyone's going to get this vaccine and everything's going to be okay. The America is going to open back up again. You're going to be doing the things that you used to do. So with that being said, we have these needles. Uh, the This 200 SMA price, the, the stock closed above it. And also it's having this like bullish engulfing pattern type of thing where um, you have the green candlestick that happened on Friday engulf the previous red candlestick actually engulf both of them right so we have the thursday and wednesday green uh, red candlesticks we're engulfed by uh friday's green candlestick and tuesday's uh green candlestick so that becomes a little bit significant when we think of breakouts uh right now i'm not suggesting that it would be a breakout because the 20 sma uh, price is still below the 200 SMA price. So I do have a little bit of reluctance on, you know, how high this stock can spike. But as we could tell, there is some upside, right? That, you know, it can really cover this whole $8 range if it really wanted to with the, with good movement. Uh, and notice that each day, you know, after a green day, let, let's zoom in a bit. Um, Cause after strong green days, it, it's usually, followed by uh, a, a red day. So we had a strong green day here, we had a red day. Strong green day here, red day. Green, green, so we couldn't go green no more because it was all overbought, then pulled back. Red, 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 red rum. So there was a lot of red rum going on over there. But it, it still traded sideways. It was like one, you know, this is one. So it gave us a two, then the, that three, then consolidated down for four then it's still consolidated down that we're at a one now. So being that on the daily it's over the 200 SMA price um, and it's entering, it looks like it wants to enter phase two. What does it look like on the four hour time frame? We have it on the four hour time frame that the stock is trading above the 200 SMA price. This, and it's not overbought. Um, and the MACD looks like it wants to cross showing that it wants to shift momentum. Uh, and then we also see that the TTM squeeze is looking 
pretty green right here. Um, even the, the implied volatility is lower than the historical. So that even gives us uh, some hopes on the contract price. We go to the hour chart, uh, no new high was created in the past 180 days. Uh, the past 180 days, the previous high was still around that $22 area. Um, I know it doesn't say that on the daily, it says like 21, but this happened in the pre-market or after hours. That's why the that's why the smaller time frames are important, especially long term. So we have that it's trading above the 200 SMA price. And then if we come down to the uh, five day, the intraday price, we see that it made a new high back on Wednesday. This was Friday, this is Thursday, this is Wednesday, it made a new high. After it made a new high, what did it do? It traded with the 200 SMA price actually. It didn't, didn't really trade underneath it, like it wanted to, but it was like, nah, bitch, I'm staying. But it didn't do that. It kind of just broke down on Thursday. And then when it broke down, it held that support before actually trading above the 200 SMA price. So it didn't make a new high on Friday, which is good. So it shows that there's still a chance that it can make a new high, a newer high uh, on this upcoming day and really start to break out towards the $14 area. I'm just suggesting 14. I don't think it really can go to 14. But I do think it could break out above this previous high of twelve dollars and twenty five cents. Um, if it does that, then we then we can talk about how much higher it can go. This is what we prepare. Um, so, like I said, I, I'm anticipating going on into this position. So, if I'm thinking about getting into this position, um, do I want the options or do I want the shares? Right now, I just want the shares because of that pullback that could potentially happen on the two hundred on the twenty SMA price. So I'm looking at the 20 SMA price and I say, okay, I'm, I'm moving my cursor just so I can see the price. Okay. Um, the price is on the Y axis um, on the right side of the chart. It says $10.03. That's the 20 SMA price. Uh, it's currently, it, it closed at $11.98. The five EMA price is $11.45. So I know that, hey, if I can, the closer I can get to at least $11.45 before entering this position, the better shot I will have of protecting myself on the downside, right? Because the downside suggests that $10.03 is that price. The 200 SMA price says it's $10.85. So at least I'm still above the, the 200 SMA price. So I say that, okay, 200 SMA price, $10.85, ultimate downside. Um, the five EMA price is eleven dollars and forty-five cents. That's that's where I kind of want to be at because I still want the stock to trade above the five EMA for it to go higher, right? That's the whole purpose of having this moving average. If it trades above the five EMA, then it's going to go higher. But I have to understand that ten dollars and eighty-five cents can happen intraday. That it can happen intraday. Not maybe not show up on the daily, but it might show up, you know, that even though it's trading above the 200 SMA price on Friday, that on Monday it might not, it might actually come back to $11 um, and to $11 and 13 cents, right? Which is close to $10 and 85 cents, the 200 SMA price on the daily. Right, so hopefully you're able to to appreciate what I just what I just shared, because this is this is where people end up buying at the top and then try to figure out well why why did I buy at the top and the price pulled back on me? It's because it tried intraday to retest the high. It couldn't break that high like here. It couldn't break the high here, so it pulled back, and then it might pull back below that 200 SMA price. The whole day, it can be below that price the whole day, but as long as it holds eleven dollars, that eleven dollar and eleven dollars is above the SMA price on the two hundred day S on the on the daily price on the daily of the the two hundred SMA. So that means that the twenty SMA would definitely come across and above the two hundred SMA price. And then the stock, you can say, hey, it might be a red day on Monday, but 
I still got in at eleven dollars a share or um eleven dollars and fifty cents a share, eleven dollars. I'm risking I'm my downside risk it has been minimized because I know now where the ultimate bottom could be and I'm willing to risk fifty cents for a possible, let's say we get in at eleven dollars and twenty five. No, let's say eleven dollars and forty five cents. Right, eleven dollars and forty five cents. We get in. The resistance is twelve dollars. All right, so eleven dollars forty five to downside risk. We're saying, uh, oh yeah, eleven. That's the EMA, right? So the next downside will be the two hundred SMA price, right? We said ten dollars and eighty five cents. So that's sixty cents. Yeah, 60 cents, $11.45, $10.85, 60 cents downside. Um, and once it's retest, it's $12.27 upside, right? That's 80 cents, 80 cents or so. Still a kind of one to one, not my biggest favorite, but you got to think that's where resistance is. So resistance is the potential that, hey, if we could break resistance and go higher, where is the next high? Maybe $13. I say 13 because this is where this is where we have some stops here. We have some stops at this resistance, right? Um, we even had a fake out breakout over here before it continued to pull back. So maybe we say 1350 is the next upside area, right? Because it consolidated there, kind of broke out over here, right? But what do I really want? I really want this $15 area. Why? Because I saw there was more major breakdown that happened there, right? Or even activity that happened there, like right here, almost kind of right here, but not quite. There was, you know, a nice break here as it consolidated and went up higher that breakdown that happened there. So there was a little bit more activity that was happening there. Um, that could show that with more volume, the stock could possibly go up higher. Um, so now it's just a whole wait and, wait and see game. And if I were to buy an option on it, I would want the volume to be more than the open interest. This spread actually looks Good, right? 10 cents, that's what you relatively want um, on your contracts. You know, I'm not, I'm not buying a contract for this week though. Like, not on this one. I, I don't, I would treat this as a longer term trade, like more than more than a day. I, I probably would not even day trade this one. I, I would actually buy a longer term contract on that. Um, possibly, I don't know. I still don't know when it comes to the options, how I would day trade the actual option itself. It would need volume behind it. Um, but I do believe that the, the, the um, chart shows definite upside. Um, so this is one to look at. Like I said, um, you're buying at 1145, you risk, you have a one-to-one -one risk, $10.85 on the downside, on the upside, $12.25 uh, meeting resistance. Um, you meet that resistance, it doesn't break for some odd reason um, and continues to consolidate sideways. At least you are entering, you're still in that phase one, phase two area. And it doesn't, you're not given a whole lot of downside risk to worry about. RVP and Probably the last note I will make on RVP is going to their actual, like into their numbers. And their numbers show, I don't think you can see it. Yeah, there you go. There, there was some buying that happened back in December, uh, November, October. Um, there was a couple of sales that happened recently. Uh, in April, February, and January, just you know, one per month. Um, and then there was like, you know, a lot of shares too. So that 
also as the stock price came down, they also were, you know, I guess taking some profit from it, um, depending on where. So yeah, I see a sale at twenty dollars, right? Fifteen dollars. They were buying at twelve eighty five. So you know, they sold at twenty dollars. That, that was a director. That's pretty damn good. They knew what they were doing. Uh, they were trying to take trying to take some money. <laughs> so, but that happened first quarter. Let's see what happened the second quarter. Um, they still did, you know, still a lot of buying on the inside that happened. So that's always good. Uh, let's see. Does anybody have any other stocks that they want to mention? I know I just gave like a breakdown of like how I would analyze a, a, a position to get in on. Um, does anybody have a stock that they're interested in that they that they want to get in on or thinking about? I know, um, like I said, we've had weeks where we've talked about stocks um, that, you know, we've kind of seen their performance and we've kind of seen, you know, how their chart plays out, like VXRT. I'm looking at this for the first time. Um, it has a lot of volume behind it, um, 104 million. The float is 122 million. So, you know, it's trading a lot, um, but it's also trading above the 200 SMA price. That's always a good thing. Um, once it's trading above that, then you're pretty, you, you're almost pretty set. And you also have to have both moving averages trading above the 200 SMA price, that also helps um, when you have both there. It's a recent spiker. It's a recent spiker, that's why um, I suggest it. Once again, it spiked back in February, um, it spiked back in May. So this is why I'm just shouting it out now, uh, VXRT. Let's look at the smaller time frames. Maybe, maybe it has something behind it. And this is something that was mentioned in the you know, in one of our talks. Um, I, I forgot when. It was. Might have been months ago. <laughs> Probably when it made that first spike back in May. Um, but it looks like oops, that's not what I want to do. It looks like the momentum. I hit the support button by accident. It looks like the momentum wants to come back down. So it might. Sorry about that. So it might pull back uh, based on this momentum, but it's still a lot of buying. So I would expect this to hit $8.21 um, at some point or another, if it can't hold this $8.77, which it's trying to do. At least it's trying. It made it an intraday high, more than likely. Yep, $10. So it should trade it below the 200 SMA price. Trades below that, then we're uh, good to go. Maybe you can get in at the eight dollar area, maybe seven eighty five, and watch it go up. Um, that might be nice. Uh, AMC, I know that's been a favorite of a lot of people. <laughs> uh, it's a little risky now. Uh, I wouldn't say it's risky actually. It's just requires a little bit more um, patience. I guess patience would be the word. Um, as I can see this going somewhat higher, which I hope not. <laughs> um, they didn't. I'm not sure if they sold any shares in this company at all, because um, they were supposed to do something. Like the CFO was supposed to do something, uh, but AMC has always been. One of those meme stocks that tend to go up higher. It's trading above the five EMA. It's not overbought. Um, I, I would say this is still like dangerous city right now, or maybe not. Or maybe not. There might be four hour time frame is showing something. It's holding the thirty six dollar area. Maybe it might go up higher. Let's see what it does on the hour. Uh, on the hour above the two hundred SMA price. So, okay. Well, maybe. Uh, maybe it might go higher. May might retest the uh, um, 
the previous high at seventy-seven dollars. You see that uh, it came down to the two hundred SMA price, didn't quite trade below it, but it came down, kind of bounced off of it, um, and then we're seeing some buying momentum on the TTM squeeze. So who knows? I I I would not be surprised if come the end of Monday morning we see and retail news. Remember retail news. I, I believe theaters are are a part of that. Um, uh, retail news comes out on Tuesday morning. We just might, we might give some more momentum to this stock. Uh, so would not be surprised that it does that. That's AMC. Uh, Fitz, I just saw that you jumped into the call. How are you feeling? I'm good, I'm good. Hello, everybody. Nice. Everybody's chilling and listening in the background. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about AMC, Fitz? AMC? <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a, a lot of thought, sentiment around it. Still. Mm -hmm. Especially for the week coming. Yeah. Uh, this week, I think, is the 18th. Hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, there's a lot of there's still, there's still money flowing in there. Yeah. A whole lot. A whole lot of money money is going in it for the 18th. One thirty call, one twenty-five, one twenty, seventy. I see a three hundred thousand for the for the fifty. Oh wow! As yeah, for the fifty, I see that too. Wow, and the forty-five. Yeah. What was the other one you said? Forty-eight. Um, for the for the one twenty, I see um sixty-four thousand, and that's for just for next week. For the uh, one thirty seven months. Is that weekly? Yeah, the 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 um the one twenty is for next week weekly. Mm. And um one thirty that's for July second, ninety eight thousand. Wow. So. Um, so to bring bring Andre up to speed, and so you see what we're talking about when it came when it comes to the what Fitz is referring to is the volume versus the open interest. So the volume and a lot of weight and a lot of the um, the option plays that he just mentioned had more volume than the open interest, like the forty three dollar call uh, that was thirty six thousand. Of volume versus the open interest of forty seven hundred. Um, the fifty dollar call at thirty five thousand uh, versus the open interest of twenty four thousand. So when you have something like that, that's a very strong bull sentiment, right? Uh, heading in that direction. Um, but you also have to compare that to the to the puts and see what the puts how they're doing. And even though the puts on the $50 call have more volume than open interest. It definitely didn't outweigh uh, the 35,000, right? As uh, damn near like, you know, one to seven um, on it. So, or one to five, I should say, on it. And so, um, but that ratio is kind of crazy. Um, so are you going to get into are you going to get into uh AMC fits? <laughs> um right. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Man, that one looks a little crazy. Um I'm not sure how that's going to actually uh, Yes, know. thank you Keisha. Yeah. We'll see you next week as well. 
Um, what you think about CIGR? I've been waiting to get in on this. And Absolutely, Andre. Got to make that. Got to make that a point. Had to. Yeah, volume is so so critical, and that's how come these stocks do like really really start to spike. Um, What's the ticker? Uh, T I G R. Oh oh oh! Oh, it did well Friday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I'm looking at the the watch list of all the stocks that we mentioned in the past weeks. A lot of them did very well. Yeah. Um, this was one of them, especially after earnings. Right? After earnings, this is why you know watching earnings is really important, knowing what's happening, what's going on. Um, Clearly, I put in the marker for $21.50 and never triggered, so I couldn't get in. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was going to go up. <laughs> the trigger is right there, staring me in the face. Rat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so mad. But I knew this was going to go up. Um, oh, oh, man, that sucks. Oh, it's whatever. But I haven't seen this since I made the trigger, so I don't even know. I don't even know what my thought process it was going in, but right now seeing it another time fits you. Um, what are they saying on the options side? Did I still see upside on the on the share price side? Um, options. I know this says a nineteen million came in at four four eleven minutes past four Friday. I don't see whether it's up or down, but it's 19 million. About the 28, 56. You said this was for what day? It came in Friday, 4 11, 11 after 4. 19 million. On which uh, which contract or which expiration date in contract? No, that's a different thing. I don't see. I don't. I don't definitely see that on the contract. But it's um, the last one. It was twenty. It just it was for the twenty fifth call. But it was um, for six for next week. And that was oh yeah, sixty seven thousand. But it already passed that. Well, what they did, it went up Friday and is now cons and consolidate right in the 28 here or there. It's going sideways. Yeah. And then, so maybe they, they expect another move up. Yeah, because it's all like, this is all phase two consolidation upward, like upward consolidation. It just came from phase one, 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 the phase two broke when news, their earnings broke and went up higher. Uh, there's a bullish engulfing candlestick, so hopefully it'll get some upside to $31. I can see it retesting this, especially now that with all these fintechs that's um, that's up and out. Um, we have Acorns. I know they're they're going to be in the SPAC. I forgot what the ticker symbol is. I didn't look. I forgot to look. Not look it up, but yeah, re look it up. I forgot to re look it up. Um, I don't want to drag on with that, but I see that there's a lot of, a lot of these fintech companies are really starting to make their move. NCTY is one that you mentioned fits um, as well. Um, uh, we mentioned this and it's doing the same thing, right? This whole downward, that's phase four, consolidate, 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 phase one, consolidate, and it's entering into this phase two realm, right? Um, like yeah, all the moving averages are coalescing with each other. And then there's this whole bearish engulfing candlestick pattern. Excuse me. I actually put a trigger here at uh, $16 and 15 cents. And it went off when I was in the middle of work. So I couldn't even, 
uh, place a trade because um, I wanted that sixteen dollars. I think I have the note. I could have note for that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sixteen twenty. You know, they're looking for the four hour chart to not be overbought so that I can buy more contracts for a lower price. Uh, this will also lower the volatility used to confirm the price. Anything below this price would be great. Ideal 1620. Um, it did get there. It did get there. Uh, it was at 16, this, this was it, All right? So when that move was made, and I was looking for that red day. You know, like I said before, stock goes overbought, right? You look at the smaller time frame. Where is it in relation to the 200 SMA price, right? In relation to the 200 SMA price, the moving averages and the share price is trading below the 200 SMA. So it's going to, it's going to try. And you see that I made a resistance area up here because, you know, yeah, it, could, it can actually go up. Past this one just made price, which it did intraday, but it pulled back. And then when it pulled back, see, this is still, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is one, this is two right here. All right. So now we have on the four hour time frame that the 200 SMA price is below the five EMA and the share price, the 20 is following right behind it. So now that we look at the hour chart, the hour chart shows that both are trading above the 200 SMA price. Um, and it's testing resistance and it's not overbought. So I would not be surprised once again if this stock goes a little bit higher um, on Monday. But I would say first, I expect pullback. I expect the two things I expect. The first thing I expect is that it's going to retest the previous high. It's trading uh, it closed at 13 or 1939, right? It pulled back to 1908. Right? I made a new high on Friday before the close of the market day. So I expect that it's going to retest either this 1950 or $20 before it, A makes a definitive move higher and go into 21, maybe. Then if it goes past 21, the possibility of it going to next would maybe no, 26 is too high. I don't think we can get to 26. Not in not in one day. Maybe 23. No, maybe 20, 20, yeah, maybe 22 dollars, 22.84. You know, if it can break 21 and really ramp up on news. Like, um, and that's me being overzealous and thinking that it'll go higher that way. Um, but it will eventually go higher. It will, just not in one, not in one move. I don't know about that. I mean, unless you're seeing some more money moving in uh, of fits, you're seeing more money flowing in there. It might take you um, Saba after we finish. Yep, the very next day. There is Alzheimer's news that came out the very next day. Okay. I love that. I love that. Eh? I love it. He said, okay. Like, they didn't catch it? No, I wasn't going to chase Saba because I was already bitter about being in Saba when it was at $45 and, and $30 a share, and I couldn't re reap any of that run-up. So I was already bitter. Not like I'm not chasing it, even though we we both looked at it, and we could definitely see and tell that it was going to go higher. Yeah, and even Friday it went up ten dollars. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yep, this is Saba. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm <laughs> I remember this so bad. I was in it around here. 
the share price wasn't going, not the share price, the option price wasn't going as high. And it wasn't, you know, the things that we talked about options now, if it's, um, you know, that helped for me to analyzing Sava from when I was in the trade. Because when you have a, a wide spread like Sava does on his option contracts, right? Um, right now, it's like 60 cents. Before it wasn't wasn't 60 cents it was it was more like two dollars <laughs> it was like a two dollar spread um like all right if we go a little bit further out of the money yeah because these contracts expire this week so this is july 16th expiration you see there's a two dollars and 20 cent spread here two dollar uh, 18 dollar a dollar 60 really um this is a dollar 80 spread so there's like the spreads are pretty uh, wider right that that really messed me up um just because of the fact that you know when you're trying to get in the price and you know and you're bidding your ass they don't give you the price that you want they give you the price that they want so when you put in a contract thinking that you're going to get the price you might end up buying you might end up getting the, the actual contract that they're giving you so I had to be real mindful of where, who, like when the ask is being asked that I am able to grab that contract. Because sometimes on these widespread contracts, you will see a flash of that contract price that you really want. And it'll be up there for like 10 seconds, if that, and then it's gone. <laughs> so like when you, on these ones that have these wider spreads, especially if they can make those exponential moves, like this one, this made a ten dollar move. Like if you catch it on, you know, on the lower end of that spread, and then you're up five dollars a share on the share price, then that means that the contract price probably at least went a dollar or two. So you can at least make some type of money on that wider spread. But this one, I was so bitter, Fitz. I couldn't even. I couldn't even like jump in like with a clear head. <laughs> Did you end up getting in this one? No. It's funny, you have to have to buy the shares. When it's wide like that, it's best to buy the shares. You can buy 10 shares, you don't have to buy a whole lot. You just, you know, you can buy the shares. See, I, I was believing in this company from back end. See, I'd be finding them. I was buying it at $9.35. And it was right before it made this drop. And I was like, oh my God, what is going on with y'all? Because I knew that they had good Alzheimer's um, um, medication or therapeutic. Back then, it was just a matter of time. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> another one I missed out on. No. Well, um, well, I, I when I heard that the... Um, BIID was um, halted. And I, I ran a quick search and I find AMGN, another all time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I bought I bought an option on that one. So by the by time it, um, uh, Bill and Biogen came out, it jumped up like about $4. Oh, so you you end up buying Amgen? Amgen, yeah, and Amgen before before the they they release it from the alt. By Amgen, Amgen run up, jump up, I think at the three or four dollars somewhere there. Because, because all of them is Alzheimer's, so. Right. I have a friend brother who keeps on mentioning this one too, and I, I keep on saying that two fifty resistance has been deplorable. It doesn't. Want to trade beyond that, Amgen? It keeps on hitting two fifty and gets smacked right back down every time. Yeah, but if you if, if, that, if you said the thing about the the option, if you know that's how it, if you know that's how the stock perform, you can trade it. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're you right. play. You, you play it for the two fifty, and then whenever it reaches, you you buy a put on it, then you catch it going back down. 
Yeah, that's a good thing about it when you know you know this stuff perform. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Like um yeah, because it has that twenty dollar range on there. Right. Like from two sixty to or two thirty to two sixty. So uh, you're right that that thirty dollar move is a is a good opportunity to to get it. I'm just I'm waiting for the breakout. Like I'm always looking for the damn breakout. Mm -hmm. Um but I'm realizing, you know, there are methodologies um, beyond than just waiting for the breakout. You know, that's my bread and butter. <laughs> uh, I want, you know, there's more strategy. So, like, yeah, you're right with Amgen, it has opportunity to go up higher too. Um, so I could see why you end up buying this one. Um, when you look at the four hour time. Yeah. Yeah, it's trading below the 200, um, but the moving averages are coalescing. So again, real close to each other. So we see that 247 and 240 are essentially the range that it's trading in. And then the hour chart shows, this is the tricky part. I'm trying to understand when, when there's a slope of the 200 SMA and the stock is trading above that, um, above the SMA price, but the slope is coming down, that the price also comes down. And um, even though it like, it's not overbought, it's not overbought. So like, I'm not, that part I have to like, consider again. I've seen the slopes and when it's sloping up and the stock is going up, it's fine, but this is, they're all coalescing. It's kind of want to trade sideways, but it also kind of want to go up higher because the moving averages is up higher. Even the, the five EMA is below the 20 SMA. So that's that's going to be interesting to see how those two work out. If the, if the five EMA bounces off the 20 SMA, the 200 SMA price and starts trading with the 20 SMA price. If that happens, then we know some news is really starting to form. And it will spike up higher, and then maybe even break this 250 to price. Yeah, that would be nice. Another ten dollars of upside. If not, then there's definitely three dollars of downside. But I think we like ten ten dollars upside versus three dollars up three dollars downside. Uh, you know, sounds like a nice risk reward. You yeah. know, can't go wrong with that. Um, so good, good play at that. Yeah. That was a really good play. So did you end up buying NC? Did you end up buying NCTY? I had it the week before. But it went right. up. Yeah, NCTY is a, is a good one. Yeah, because um, I the end up buying UVS. Sorry, I cut you off. What were you about to say? Yeah, I had it the week before because I catch it right as it, when it was going down, down, down. As soon as it right. made the turn to go back up, I uh, catch it. My laptop is trying to catch up. <laughs> um, come on, catch up. Thank you. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, like I said, uh, bullish engulfing candlestick. Um, I don't trade the spy calls or puts, but Fitz might, uh, every once in a while, I think Fitz does the puts on the spy. Is that right, Fitz? Yeah, the, the, the spy is a nice hedge, hedge whenever you have stocks, because right now, and, um, it's, I think it's at a better, it have a better chance of coming down more than going up. 
I, that's just how I feel because the market is kind of it's just going sideways, sideways, you mm -hmm. know. So you're not really going. You know, need some catalyst to bring it up. So what I do whenever I'm when I'm having a lot of all options, I try to put it, get get some puts there. But I try to get it a little away from it. That should in case it continue to go up, I just sell another one and turn it into a spread. So I make money instead. So if you come down and make money, and if it go up, if it look like it going up, I can sell. For instance, like we're trading at the two four twenty four now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trading at the four twenty four now. So if I'm I'm sort of concerned about my options and you know anything might come any news might come in and it, and it start to go down, I try to get some some puts like um for a few days the cheap the cheaper ones but i try to get mm -hmm. it up like um four dollars or below maybe or even say four eighteen four eighteen you know should in case it start to go down then you know it's it's there to support the other options that are gonna the call options are gonna go down too so um right. if it start that. to go if it start to go up now, then I sell the 19 and turn it into a spread because when you sell the one above, you make money when it's going up because you sell somebody going down when it's going up. So, uh, you know, so you say when you sell the the, the option the, above, it, yes, I above buy the somebody spread. going up, yeah, yeah. If it's going up, I sell the one above. So if supposing I bought two put going down and 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 it decided to go up, I sell it the, the, the 19. If I bought it for 18, I sell it to 19. And when, while it go up, I make money. And if it come down, if it come down, then the other person make money. But if as long as it go up, I still make money. So I I I de I decide that based on which direction it go. If I if I'm concerned about the put first, the naked put, but if it start to go up instead, I just sell the 219 above. So you'll get the 419 because uh as long as, so my, get the, as long as my expiration sure day, uh -huh. as long as my expiration day doesn't fall below the 419. As long as it stay above the 419, I get the difference between the two options. It's the, 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 I get the difference between the two. So it's because it's like you start off, it's like you start off in the in the profit because you're in the naked option or in a, in a um, yeah, sell side I, option. Yeah, you're providing I, I, the liquidity right, so, for the call option. Yes, I'm bring, I'm bringing up a ticket now with the 28. The 420 and the 421. And between that, there's 23 cents. But supposing what it was a dollar between the both of them. If it go, if it go, if, that's this is on the put side. So if the if the spy go up five dollars, as long as it stay above the 21, I bought I, I bought the 2020 and sold the 21. I bought the, bought the, the 20, 20 and put okay, and so it's more like a box. Yeah. So 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 if 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 supposing there's a dollar between the two prices, one is one is for two dollars two dollars and one is for a dollar. So it, in between you have a dollar. If as long as the spy stay above the 21, 421. Remember now I bought the 420 and I sold the 420, 421. On the mm -hmm. put side, as long as the spy stay above the 21 on expiry on the expiration day that I bought it for, I get the dollar between there. Yeah, that's that's different. I don't know how good my audio is, so sorry. But yeah, that's that's different. That's I, I haven't heard of that before. That's a uh, buying it that way, but that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So 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 you, there's a buying and a selling. You. Okay, when you buy an option, when you buy a call option, is somebody you buy it from? Right, right, so right, right. You, you mm -hmm. can either be the buyer or the seller. 
That's what okay. option provides. You. you can buy right. it. You can either buy it or sell it. If somebody put it out there for you to buy. And that's how, and that's what I was saying. Like, it's like you're starting off with the profit because you're providing the 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 call buyer with the contract. Yes. For for four twenty. Um, yeah. So if you, so if, you know they buy it, and then they eventually sell it, you still made your profit because. Yeah, you, yeah. Whatever, whatever they, they do, it profit. doesn't matter. From the moment they buy it, and it works in your favor, you still get your profit. If whether or not they come out of it, it doesn't matter because you have already sold them. That's just how the system right. works. Okay, okay, got you, got you. They call it they Thank call you. it a spread. They call it a spread. Yeah. So you can either yeah. buy the call the call spread. You can either buy the call spread going up or as well as you can you can buy the call spread going down as you you can both buy and sell either side. And you can you can you can you can sell five. You, if you buy five, you have to sell five. That's the that's the way to go. Buy right. five going down, and you want to turn it into a spread. You sell five. Hmm. So once the stock price goes down. It's like you already protected yourself on the downside, so you have right. the mm -hmm. side of the puts, and then you just sell the puts, and then once stop once the price goes back, the option contract goes back up, and then you already had you know the call. Uh, well, no, you have more puts. You're because you're buying puts on puts, not a call put spread, right? So if you're doing a, a put put spread, I, then I, then I, 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 I can see what you're doing. Sorry. I only turn it into a spread if 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 it's going against me. Um, I mean, sorry. I only turn it into a spread if if it's going against me or it's going the other way. Okay. So it's like if let's, it's not following your plan or if it's definitely like the market right, so direction is let, changed. Let, let, let me explain. Let me explain them more clear upon them. All right. Because this spy is our, the because this spy is a like one cents between each, you know, the bid and the ask. It's much easier for you to do it with. Because you don't, right. as you was worried about Sava a while ago, the 60 cents between each, between bid and ask. All right. So for instance, right. suppose you buy, um, you buy two calls on NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. But you're worried that the market, and you're, you're worried that the market might go, go down. Something happening where that the market might be. You know, this spy is the first thing that is going to move down. Uh, it, it, it releases the thing, it will drop three and three dollars, you know, and all like that. So, what I would do, like, on a near expiration, because the spy have an option that expire on Wednesday, Monday, and Friday. That's why it's much cheaper. Right. It expire Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So you can look for an option that is expiring on a Monday. So you buy Tuesday, but you worry that maybe Tuesday night, you wake up Wednesday morning, the market might go down. You can just use a spy as an edge. You buy a put going down just to secure. That should in case you wake up tomorrow morning and the market going down, you have it, it will make money for you. But you, you don't buy one too expensive to match the call option that you'd buy. You'd buy one cheaper. Okay. Gotcha. Another way you so, can do that. No, go ahead, Andre. Sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say, so you buy one cheaper so that if uh, maybe the market continues to go, you know, in the right direction. Say you had a, a put, a spy okay. put. You right. You buy one so, cheaper. On the spy, so, just to hedge it like a hedge it should in case in you know, for instance you know when you buy a call option there's no limit to where the price can go it can be two mm -hmm. you can you can buy it for two dollars and it go up to ten dollars right but should right. in case the market you know you know this market go most of the time is overnight the news come mm -hmm. right it's overnight the news come so what you do you you can buy on the spy the, the spy look as you said it have expiration for monday tuesday monday wednesday and friday 
all you need to do is buy a, a put option or you can buy one or two based on the strike you buy. It can be sometimes 50 cents, sometimes it's a um, dollar, sometimes it's 60 cents, you know, anything between that it can be a dollar 20. Mm. So you just buy one should in case, you know, you, you might lose it every market go, but you, you must also understand that you, you buy cars every market go up, you're good. Right. So you don't worry about that, but just should in case something happen overnight. And you wake up tomorrow That's morning and when you wake up this time. Okay, just think about it. Supposing when the market begin to drop with COVID, remember when COVID came in, mm -hmm. and you had you had you had um five option call option on Facebook going up, and then when you wake up in the morning, the market dropped ten dollars, and you had a fifty cent fifty cents call on this guy, your fifty cent call would could cover all of that money money that you lost on Facebook. You mean you mean fifty cent uh. Put right option. on spot. Put option. Put option. Put right, right. Because okay. remember the spy continued to, and if you leave it there, the spy to come wait. Remember, the, you remember far down the spy came now came. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So that would turn into thousands of dollars. Right. Here. Right. Um, you understand? You get, you get the point I'm trying to make now, right? I I, I definitely get it. I get it. Definitely. Yeah. So the the because the spy, if you notice the spy, if you pull up your option and you see it, it trade like. One, the put options, for instance, right now, the, the five day expiration, the put option on the 20, 422 is like 188 for the ax, 186 for the bid. So, you know, they are like at one cent between each other. So that is why it is the best one to use as an edge going down when you have a lot of options going up. Right. Okay. That makes sense because if, if you, you know the market is going down, yeah. you have. Um, you have you're your making money. positions that are going that are going <laughs> like, oh, like yeah you're like you might as well just make your money on the puts going on the downside <laughs> yeah should it's in insurance. case the market turn going on yeah that's the right word mm -hmm. right there insurance mm -hmm. right so 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 i don't want to get it complicated but when it, when we talk about the spread now supposing you you place you buy an option a put option going down but when you wake up in the morning you realize okay the market the fear is gone and the market decide to go up. I suppose you buy the 122 of the 422 now and it's going down mm -hmm. and it's going up instead. Something good news come, the Fed decide that it's going to raise the rate and the market begin to go up. You just sell the one above the one that you buy and turn and turn the put option into a spread. So as long as the market remain above that for the for the until the expiration day, you still make money from that. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me. Okay, okay. So, I see what you said. Four twenty-two. Say we have a four twenty-two strike. Yeah, that was my put. But then the market is going up. Up in right. Up instead of down. In, instead of down, you said yeah. I would buy the strike price above. Sell it. Sell the strike yeah, price. Sell the one above. Sell it and turn it into okay. a spread. Okay. And yes, as long as the market not, remain above that until the expiration day, whatever, whatever bit money between the two prices got you you, okay. you get that money yeah. got you got you okay okay and that's why you were saying you can you can uh sell maybe like the the wednesday um strike price rather than you know maybe a friday because yeah, you'll, you you'll, can... you're hoping that it stays above that price it stays above that yeah turn it into right. a spread okay i got you i got you yeah thank but you you don't want yeah. you know you're welcome but you don't want to sell the one no it's trading at when 324. You don't want to sell the one too close to that. You don't want to buy the option too close to that. Or I mean, I mean buy the put option too close. You want to give it a little space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like about, mm -hmm. I mean, five dollars below. Five, you know, just five. five, five yeah. So I suppose it's trading okay. it's trading at, at at um 424 now. You know, mm -hmm. it's trading between 423 and 424. Maybe you want to buy the um and the 419. Okay, so that's why you bought the four. That's why you were yeah. mentioning the 420. Yeah, that's why you mentioned the 418 or the 419. That then, then should in case, as I said, it, it going up instead of down, you sell the 19. So you turn it into a spread. You want to give it a space that should in case it come down a little and it go back up, it still stay above the price that you sold. Mm -hmm. The other person. And they call it a spread. 
the next thing again is that um, for you, this is what I also want you to understand. If you if you buy a call option, and to, for 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 just for protection also, you can mm -hmm. sell a spread above that. So, supposing you don't expect the stock to go to go more than three dollars, just a, let, let us use this pie as an example, right? Mm -hmm. This pie as an mm -hmm. example, it's trading it's trading at four twenty four now. So suppose you bought at the four twenty four call. Because you're expecting that it might go up to 427. Mm -hmm. Right? You can go above that, maybe you can go up to 4, 430. I mean, yeah, 430. You 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 sell the 430 and buy the 431. So if the market go down, you still make money from that. It's all to help mm -hmm. you. So spread it spread can work from both sides. You can also buy okay. the call, but also should in case the market go against you, you you you'll still make money because if the one that you sold the four thirty, if the market begin to go down, that begin to lose money and you make money. Mm. But every, whenever okay. you sell one, you have to buy the one above. So it's gotcha. to make it to make it a spread. They call it an option spread. A call mm. spread if it's on the call side, and if it's on the put side, it has put is it's a put spread. So, so those are the things that you can use to hedge your option. That that in case in a case where you where, where you would lose um, two dollars, you might only lose if it go against. You might only lose one twenty. That's another way you can do it. Yeah, that'd have been helpful before I played it. <laughs> I really wish I knew that before. <laughs> yeah, so you, some um, of you guys who like to fly, it, who, who who like to trade the iFlyers like A, B, and B, mm. and all like that. Sometimes it's it's best when you hedge. Right. You hedge, right. you know, like that. So, hope you understand. Yeah, I hope I was very clear and that you understand. No, no, you you definitely were. You definitely were. But I, I will be doing more research to make sure yeah. I got it down. Or I try yeah, to do it myself. Look at you. You can go on um, um, Investopedia, and mm -hmm. you can read up read up some more on, on call spread and put spread. No right. All right. Thank so, you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. You're welcome. Yeah, as you were mentioning high flyers, I was thinking about Fubo. <laughs> uh, Fubo, Fubo is another one. Fubo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's a high flyer. Yeah. I hold FUBA long term. Are you marrying that one? Yeah. <laughs> we got married a little while ago. It wasn't relationship, wasn't working out, but it's starting to improve now. Yeah. 